K-State cruised comfortably to their win over West Virginia on Monday night in Bramlage Coliseum. Second straight win. The energy is back for K-State basketball. There's NCAA tournament life. Is exactly what I would have said if the game had ended after 20 minutes. Instead, the NCAA, like the villains and cowards they are, said, no, you got to play 40 minutes. And nobody told K-State. Uh, the Wildcats blew a 25-point lead in the second half. And everybody played a part in blowing that lead. And we're going to dissect it. And we're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to be positive. We're going to be negative. We're probably going to want people fired and also people to be putting the rafters after this video is over. There's a lot of emotions from tonight's game. All that ultimately matters is that K-State won 94-90 to in overtime. I'm Mason Vogt. That's Drew Galloway. Welcome into K-State Online. Uh, Drew, how would you sum up this game? It, it feels like three different games. The, there was the, the first half where K-State looked like the best team in the world. Like K-State made 11 threes in the first half. Tyler Perry was getting going. Camp Carter still struggled a little bit, but it felt like everybody else was amazing for K-State in that first half. Then there was a second half where for four minutes, K-State, again, still looked dominant, but then the last 16 where West Virginia just was lights out and K-State played really tight, and Jerome Tang even admitted that they played really tight at the end. And then you get down to the last 40 seconds, and Jesse Edwards is at the line, and you're thinking, oh, crap, is K-State really about to lose this game after being up 25? He's at the line with West Virginia up two. He misses both. And then Tyler Perry gets fouled at the other end, makes both of his free throws, and then the game gets to overtime. And I look to Mason and I say, you know, eventually K-State has to lose in overtime, but I don't think that they do. Like, if they win today, it's hard to bet against K-State in overtime going forward because this one felt truly different than any other overtime game that K-State's played. They had no momentum. Bramlage was stunned when the game got to overtime, to be completely honest. And it, it just felt like this was the game that they were going to lose. And somehow, some way, K-State keeps finding a way. As they keep finding a way, overtime is like Michael's secret stuff in Space Jam for K-State. Because Jerome Tang said after the game, he's like, you know, I, I tell him it's, it's this game. It's one game at a time. He does not bring up the past success in overtime to this team. But these guys know it. And he said, hey, we went over there, and I could tell by the look in their eyes that they were going to get this done. They weren't going to – this it's definitely one of those things that the players are aware of it it is in their head and it's this is actually a good thing to have in their head because it's not like they just go into overtime and say oh we're going to win this thing it's they have the confidence to go out and win the game and that's what's so good about their overtime mentality it isn't oh this game's ours which is what i think the fans probably think at this point theirs is oh yeah we're taking this thing right now we're making it happen that is a significant thing about the way that they've been able to have success in overtime. And you just had guys step up in OT. I mean, Tyler Perry was a star throughout the entirety of the game. Very rare that we said that this year where the entirety of the game, it's come for him. Now, there was a lull in the second half, but there was a lull for everybody on K-State's offense. And Jerome Tang thought they played not to lose the game as opposed to going out and taking it. And I think the turning point was probably that Cam Carter miss dunk that he had. Because if he makes that, there's some momentum, some energy. I think at that point they started to go, okay, maybe we should reel this thing back in, which ultimately ended up being a bad thing. Because the 25-point lead they blew, it feels like, no matter what the lead was for K-State in the second half, this would have been the outcome tonight. They would have blown that lead. They could have gotten up 35 or they could have gotten, been only up five. I think we get a similar outcome in tonight's game, but they came through, made it happen in OT. As for everything that happened before that, let's talk about the first half. Some really good positives there. For the game, K-State made 15 threes. It's one shy of the Big 12 record for them against Oklahoma State in 2019. The biggest bright spot there is Day-Day Ames, who is taking the shots when they're there, and he's knocking them down now. Yeah, Day-Day Ames is slowly increasing, not just his shooting percentage, but how often he's shooting. Now he's up to, like, I believe it's like 38% from three in conference play. If he just keeps taking small jumps and hits them when they're open, K-State's a lot harder to guard. I mean, we've talked at nauseum, I feel like, at this point, about how easy K-State is to guard at times because they only have three threats to shoot. Well, Day Day Ams could be a fourth, and, th and that makes you a lot harder to guard, and it opens up the space for everybody. That's why Tyler Perry was open and knocking down shots today. But it, the overtime thing, too, that, that's kind of why the TCU game hurts so much right now because K-State's been so good in overtime 
that you had Jameer Nelson hit the three to win that game. But going back to this game, though, it, it's crazy how the game flipped how it did. And, and it was it was literally just Kirk Risa and Raekwon Battle saying, we're, we're, we're going to take this. And, and for a minute, it looked like they were. I mean, that Raekwon Battle didn't miss a three in the second half or, over, or overtime until his final shot, which still almost went in. So it, it was just one of those halves where you nothing could go right. K-State scored 77 was the score or 77 77 at the end of regulation case it's worth seven points on the final 10 minutes yeah i mean you you think about this game it's the you got the two extremes in the same thing k-state played probably close to their best half of the season in the first half half, west virginia played probably i mean they're a bad team but that was probably their worst half of the season and both teams did the complete opposite in the second half, and I don't think that's hyperbole to suggest. The, these teams just went out and played it. And the one other guy that I think played a big role in what West Virginia did tonight, and because obviously Raekwon Battle and Kirk Creesa were amazing, but Josh Eilert after the game, the way he talked, I, I think he made a very compelling, not a plea, but the – the conversation he had at halftime with his guys, it registered with those guys. And they came out of the halftime break with like seven minutes left on the clock. So they weren't in the locker room for a long time. I think it was simple from the former K-State walk-on who's the interim head coach at West Virginia. And I think he just, I mean, how he laid it out, he said, look, basketball has been really good to me because I loved it and it did all these things for me. And I think taking that approach of just kind of showing like how important this was to him and what it can do if you just put your heart into it. I think that's what helped West Virginia here. Because I think if you go in there and you're just like, eh, whatever. And then the other thing that helped is K-State pushed the lead to 25. And then West Virginia got a couple things going their way. And that's when the belief kicked in. And when the belief comes in, that's a big thing. And I think just as much as you could see it in West Virginia, you could see the opposite effect in K-State where they started to go, "Uh uh-oh, here we go. Uh, I'll also add in, like, K-State allows 90 points tonight. But I don't think that K-State played atrocious defense. I mean, some of the shots that Battle and Crease that were hitting in the second half were ridiculous. I said it on Twitter during the game, but Raekwon Battle, he's proven to be an elite shot maker. Against K-State in his career now, three games. 76 points, and I think he's 10 of 19 from three, 11 of 19 from three. He's done really well. Kirk Creese, on the other hand, that was a guy that uh, it was his night. There, there were a lot of answered prayers there for him, uh, I, which, you know, I also made the joke that uh, if he talks to God as much as he talks to players on the floor from the other team, he probably will get uh, a handful of prayers answered from time to time because I, that's just not who, who Kirk Creese is. The shots he took was Kirk Creese. Uh, the amount of makes that he had tonight, that's not Kirk Risa. Uh, I also had in David Gasson, another really good game. I mean, he's playing through a lot of pain right now, and he is playing probably the best basketball of his career. Ten boards tonight. Yeah, ten boards tonight. I believe he ended with eight points, so he was just shy of a double-double. But he is getting so good to the point where K-State, you can tell when he's not in the game because K-State's not really flowing as well as they had been. Well, so you bring up David Gasson. A couple notes on him. Uh, Wildcat Insider today with Mitch Fortner and Wyatt Thompson on K-Man. Wyatt made a comment and, and said, like, it's not just a little pain that David Gasson's playing through. It's pretty significant what he's doing. And he went out there. He got 10 boards tonight, which were big. He he hit a free throw, which was big, on the front end of a one and one he which was three. He, yeah, he had a three before the buzzer sounded, which was huge at that point. The other thing to note – he did all that tonight playing 35 minutes. That's the third most minutes that were played tonight by a Wildcat behind Tyler Perry and Cam Carter. That's pretty significant for him to do that. And I, David Gasson deserves a lot of credit for how he's played the last couple of games because he went through a stretch there pretty much after the West Virginia game mm-hmm. where all the positive strides, they had gone away and it looked like old David Gasson. But he's, he's picked it back up and he's given K-State a lot more. I'll also add in Arthur Kaluma probably didn't have his best night tonight. Got called, got in foul trouble. Had two offensive fouls in the first five minutes, which was very strange, especially in this day and age in college basketball. Cam Carter didn't have his best game, but made free throws. And, and if he can get back to that, uh, just a little bit more efficient from the field. We're going to be talking about how good Cam Carter is again because he still ended with 19 points tonight and was 4 of 13 from the field. So he's still got to get it a, a little bit more together and more efficient on the offensive end of the floor. But if he keeps making free throws and getting to the free throw line 10 times, that's going to be enough for K-State. And one of the other things that was big, he was 2 of 5 from 3 tonight. So 
that's kind of been my point on Cam Carter through the majority of the season is if you're able to get – you know, he doesn't have to take a ton, but when he gets the looks, if he's good at knocking them down, it helps the flow of the offense and everything else. That That's a big thing, too, because the volume, a little bit of a struggle still, but I give a lot of credit for what he did. There were steps towards being better, uh, and we'll see how that comes out on Saturday against Cincinnati. Now, the last thing to hit on individually, Tyler Perry, 29 points tonight. It's the most he's had at K-State, 6 of 11 from 3. I went and did the math, which is a dangerous game, Uh my three math classes in college did not go very well. Shout out to math for elementary school teachers. The real ones out there that took that class know it's much harder than it sounds. I know some people are laughing at me, but those that took it, you're like, yeah, it was kind of a stupid class. Uh, if my math is right, Tyler Perry, since the Oklahoma game, averaging over 17 points, shooting over 37% from three, he struggled mightily to get things going in that direction. But since the OU game, he's been really good and looked like the guy we were promised. And uh, he deserves a lot of credit for coming through on the other end of this because I think there was a tendency to, for people to think, probably myself included at times, the way he handled the struggles – was a little soft, but I think he was being truthful and he's come out on the other side and been good and he gave a lot of praise to his teammates for helping him. Uh, I'll sound a little bit like Fran Fraschelli here. Uh, he's, he's playing like a guy that knows that this is his last few weeks of college basketball and wanting to make the NCAA tournament. Like he is doing the over my dead body kind of thing that this team has really needed. And, and it's provided to them with a jolt because I, I, I don't think that they get off to as hot of a start today or Saturday if Perry doesn't knock two threes down in the first few minutes. Like, he, how he goes is how this team really goes right now. Look, everybody out there watching knows me. I want to be very negative right now. You know this. K-State blew a 25-point lead tonight. I was down four with a minute left to play. But as the dust has settled from all this wall, I don't think anybody feels great about what happened tonight. A win is a win. You kept hope alive and you bought yourself another chance to go out and get a significant win on Saturday at Cincinnati. And that's what K-State has done. And to your point about Tyler Perry and these guys, winning is all that matters right now. And normally that's not like me to say because how you win is also important. Um, there are flaws with this team still. Those aren't going to go away. There were struggles tonight. They very easily could have lost this game, but they didn't. The opportunity is still out there, and that sets up for a very fascinating game at Cincinnati because this K-State team, they need a road win for their resume. Losses do not help at this point, especially considering what the last week of the regular season looks like for K-State at KU and home against Iowa State. And Cincinnati is a team that has struggled at home this year against all sorts of teams. It doesn't matter if you're the worst team in the league or the best team in the league. Cincinnati has played close games and lost the majority of them there. So it'll be interesting to see what K-State has in the tank when they go to Cincinnati on Saturday. Cincinnati just in general has been struggling for the last three weeks. They're, they're in a stretch where K-State was where if Houston beats them, I believe that game is on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. If Cincinnati loses that game, where Cincinnati will be in a, street, a stretch where they've lost seven of eight, so it'll it's two teams that you could say are kind of going on opposite directions, but have sort of similar resumes. I, I called it an elimination game on Sunday. It still feels like that now, where the loser is probably going to the NIT and the winner as at, as at least still alive for the NCAA tournament. I'm going to be really fascinated because Cincinnati is probably the team that I've watched the least in the Big 12, so I'm interested to see how they play. It's going to be a new place. The three of us will all be there, which will be fun. Uh, but I'm I'm optimistic now. I, I still don't know if I'd go out and pick K-State to win Saturday right now, but I'm more optimistic about where I think the season will end up going. All right, well, Drew's a hater. Uh, K-State is winning on Saturday. Mark my words. Drew's right. All three of us will be there. And we'll see what the outcome ends up looking like if the Cats can come through with what would be their third straight win. We'll have more coverage on K-State basketball throughout the week over at K-State Online. And I'm sure you'll get the highs and lows of this game. But K-State won, and that's ultimately all that matters, even though I'm already regretting not being more negative here, folks. You know this. I'm, it's killing me inside. But I guess I'm getting soft now that I'm a hashtag girl dad. People forget that about me. So, uh I also want people out there that just roll their eyes to know that I was joking there 
Uh, I the whole I don't need to get into it because I don't want to offend people. So <laughs> I like I love my daughter though. I want people to know that. So uh, this team is very mentally tough. We saw it again tonight. They've won. The, I, this is seven of the seventeen games in overtime. That's you're not a soft team if you do that. That's true. Jerome Tang now 12-0 and in overtime games. The man is a wizard there. So we'll see how it goes. Also interesting, it's the same victims in overtime for Jerome Tang. Yeah. Uh, West Virginia, KU, and Baylor all have fallen twice in overtime to Jerome Tang. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that's been a, a, a two-time loser, but not a very nice thing of him to do uh, if you're on the other side of it. One final thing. Uh, this is a sentimental joke that I'm going to drop in here. Okay. Uh, happy birthday to my mom tomorrow. K-State, in honor of you, they tried to blow a lead for as many years as you've, you've been alive. So congratulations on that one, Mom. Uh, live it up. Have a good day. Uh, that's also a joke, folks. She's nowhere near 25. <laughs> but she's still young. I consider her young. Love my mom. Love Drew Galloway. Love the Cats. They went at 94-90 in overtime tonight. And uh, we love them so much. We're going to Cincinnati, baby. Bring on that Skyline Chili. Drew's going to slurp up that chili no spaghetti chance. left and right. No chance. Yeah, we're, we're going. <laughs> we are going. There is no doubt about it, and uh, there will be a food review. So I'm Mason Voth. That's Drew Galloway. Uh, for real K-State analysis, go to kstateonline.com. Hear from the big dogs. Fan, Drew, D-Y. Not, not me. This is Some of you really hated this instant reaction, and some of you really loved it. So. Drew, you want the last word here? <laughs> I, I got nothing to add after that. All right, head over to On3, kstateonline.com. We're out of here.